Okay, we've got a lot of cables this week. First off, we got this. Uh, Last week, we had a one meter long version of this cable with a reversible USB. This week, we have a non-reversible USB version, but it's two meters long. Um, It's got this great purple pink over braid uh, and over molding. Um, It feels great. It's a lovely cable. We had it custom made to our color specifications. Um, And then, yeah, it's a two meter long USB cable. We don't have a lot of two meter long cables, so this is a, it's a pretty good deal and it's um, high quality, so. Okay. We'll show it off in a demo. We've got a bunch of panel mount stuff. So this is interesting because this is a snap-in panel mount. Um, we have a bunch of panel mount cables that you have to screw in. And these, what's nice is you just plug, you just cut a rectangular hole. And you don't have to be that precise about it. And you snap this in. So I have a demo. Yeah. I can show off. So, um, so you have to make, you know, the, the hole has to be a certain size so you can fit the other end. But for example, um, this cable has a USB-C on one side. So you can show that off. And then um, USB-A on the other. So you plug this in, because USB-C can be you know, either way, a uh, host or, or peripheral. Um, so let's say you have a piece of plastic or wood or metal. You can fit the USB-A through here. And as long as you cut it, the, the dimensions are on the product page. I don't remember the exact millimeters. You just snap this in, and it doesn't have to be as precise. You know, you, you can, there's a bit of flexibility on it. And what's nice is you get a really nice, um, smooth uh, bezel on the top here, and it's secured from the back. And then, you know, if you want to open it, you just squeeze these little ears. That's cool. To um, pop it right out. So this is a lot easier. The other kind we have are this, which don't need uh, as large of a slot. They only need like a smaller hole, but you do need to have drills. So I think maybe people, this is kind of the normal, more modern stuff. Yeah, it depends on like, what you're using. It depends what you're using it for, but I actually really like this. This is very slim, but you don't have to get the two holes aligned perfectly. You just cut a rectangular hole out, and then you can just snap this in. And um, it doesn't work on the, you know, that's another thing. It doesn't work on the thickest material. The material has to be like five millimeters thick or less. Um, whereas with this, you know, it can be as, pretty much as thick as you want because you can always just get longer screws to uh, attach it. So a couple different panel mounts. So let's go back and I'll talk okay. about the different types. So yeah, now we have another one. So we also have um, an HDMI version. So a similar, it's panel mount and it's got HDMI. It's kind of an extension cord. Um, ditto, you have HDMI on one end and then you have this panel mount square. So those are the two yeah. pop-in versions. And then we have the two screw-in versions. These are the kind of the old style panel mount cables. One has USB-C to micro B. So good if you have like a, there's a lot of devices that have old USB um, micro B or USB A connectors, but maybe you want to upgrade to USB C. So these kind of do the conversion for you at the same time. So you can get, um, oh wait, Oops, sorry, sorry. Too, too fast. Yeah. So you get, um, this goes micro B to USB C, and I think we also have one that's USB A host to um, USB C. So, yeah. so again, we have a whole bunch of different panel mount cables, like a really wide variety of them. Um, both these screwing types and uh, we're getting these snap-in panel types as well. But people really like them. It's actually quite hard to get good quality panel mount cables, but uh, I really like the ones that our cable supplier has been making for us. Okay. Okay. Now what could this be? This is the ESPI, just like that code. This is like the code. It's amazing. There's a camera on the other side of There's an ESP. There's a camera. It's an ESP32 dev board from Espressive to show off. Um, and basically, they've designed this to show off their... Um, uh, voice and vision recognition. So this is not, you know, it's all done on chip. So one nice thing is you don't have to use the internet. It's actually just using the, the processing power of the chip itself to do the vision and voice recognition. It's not going to compete with your Alexa. It's not going to be like the yeah. highest end computer that has all this, you know, natural language processing stuff. It can do basic water detection and it can do basic, basic facial recognition. So I can show it off here. So let me just show it on the overhead real fast. Yeah. Um, it has, oh, I'll just show it and then I'll, I'll set up yeah. the demo. So I've, I've plugged into my lovely cable. Um, so it's the USB, sorry, the USB goes into a USB serial converter. It has an USB 32. It has, I think, eight megabytes of PS RAM and eight megabytes of flash. Here's the Wi-Fi antenna. On the other side, it has a MEMS microphone, a couple buttons, and a camera. And let's see, I can... Yeah, so why don't you hold it, do, put it underneath the... The display there. I know. Then, this is going to be very exciting. Yeah, so I'm gonna we're going to try do, this out. I'm going to try this oh, out. Sort. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. I'm just going to Yeah, not, and we previously trained it to recognize me. So we'll see if it works again. 
Hold on, give me a second. Cause you can just move it forward. I am trying to, but I also want to zoom this in. Okay, so right now this is the camera, and I've got the two meter long cable. So Phil can point it at his face, and hopefully. Yep, it recognizes you as hello ID. I can't see what it says. ID one. ID one. ID two. Because ID one, I think, is me. So there's a couple of IDs that tell you when it's recognized um, the face. As you see, it can do recognition. It only does like two or three frames a second. It's not terribly fast. Um, it's definitely not going to be as fast as like a you know high powered Linux computer. However, for the price, the size, and the power, um, it's pretty amazing what it can do. Um, they can recognize a face in a couple seconds. So you can use this for some uh, basic facial recognition projects. I'm not demoing the eye recognition, but it can also do like watchword detection. So when you turn it on, um, it can detect when you say a word to start the uh, vision recognition stuff. So yeah, it detects me. It detected um, Jelly, who's in the photo for the demo. It does not detect me for some reason. Nope, you can't be seen. I, I cannot be seen. Um, but that's the ESPI, so a very cool dev board um, doesn't have to be used for that project but it, it's it comes with it but you know any project that you want to do that would have a microphone or video uh, camera I think it would be a this would be a good dev board for that purpose and yeah, it's got like a couple buttons and LEDs to help you know what it's doing um, and also there's some GPIO you can connect to if you okay. want to as well and tonight the star of the show besides you lady in the community is the Vemmel 7700, yay! There's everybody. something about this board that's probably special. It is, if you There's look. something, is it this picture has it? No, no, no not, no, that, no, picture. not, not that, that picture, not that picture, not that picture. Oh, someone we know made this board. It's Katni. This is Katni's first board that she designed. So it has her signature on the back. She signed every single one of them, no, not really. We, yeah. had a, we had a robot do that. Um, but her, her signature is burned into uh, the back of each PCB. Yeah. Um, my joke was this is like way better than that Apple card that they like laser etch your name in titanium. You're like, you want a circuit board. No, this so this will be accepted at all. This is a new form of payment. This is, um, this is a, a very handy sensor as well. This is a um, I2C Lux sensor. What I like about this is one, it's a low cost sensor. It's very simple. It's just power, ground, I2C. It's like super simple. And it calculates Lux for you. A lot of sensors give you a monotonic light level reading, or just tells you if something is darker or lighter. This one, it actually, it's like trimmed to give you lux. And so I think the range is like 0.01 or less lux up to like 12 kilolux. Um, you can change the gain and the integration time. It doesn't do it dynamically. You do have to change it, you know, as you reach the level, the range, the max and min of the range you're using. But for the price and the simplicity, you know, we've got Arduino code and CircuitPython code for it. Uh, it's a lovely Lux sensor, and again, one of the few sensors I've seen that actually gives you Lux output, not just brightness, color, or, you know, whatever, light output. So this is something I like about this, and I've got a little demo for it um, as well that I can show. It's my standard feather with an OLED, and then I just cover it up. And this is with the 100, um, I think I'm using the uh, 100 millisecond uh, integration time. So, you know, it works quite well. Make it pretty dark. I'm actually not too dark if I have to cover up quite well. But it goes down pretty low lux levels. And then um, it's kind of bright in here because we've got a bunch of lights on. So an easy to use lux sensor. I like it. Gets a thumbs up for me. Okay. And that's it. That's new products. Time for recap. <laughs>